Sonic CD. That was one weird game indeed. Sonic CD was one of my favorite games as a child. Although I never owned a Sega CD, when I was about 8, I received a PlayStation 2 on my birthday, along with a copy of Sonic Gems Collection. I enjoyed playing Sonic the Fighters in games like Sonic Triple Trouble. Sonic R was one of the games I couldn't stand, even back then. But Sonic CD? That was a different story, however. See, one night before bed, I was about 16 then? I was searching on eBay for some random Sonic merchandise when I saw it. A Sega Mega Drive and a Sega CD with a copy of Sonic CD on auction with a starting price of £6.99. And with only two minutes left in the auction. I thought it would be a good idea to play Sonic CD on the original console, the official one. Because my PS2 had broken three years prior at this point. I called Mum and she agreed to let me bid on it, and I waited for the end to snipe it and no one else bid. I didn't understand why, as it was a classic piece of gaming memorabilia, but I was happy to have won it. The next day I was surprised to see it on my doorstep. I was still excited to see that it had arrived, so I unboxed it, plugged it into my television, and put it on the Sonic CD disc, and proceeded to play. Everything was fine until I saw that there was already saved data on the disc. The previous owner had completed the game, but forgot to get the last time stem. I then went into Palm Tree Panic Zone and aimed to complete the level with 50 rings so I could get the last time stone, but Sonic refused to move. When I tried moving right, he stared at me and shook his head. I tried using the spin dash and figure 8 dash, but he still wouldn't budge. I waited about 2 minutes for him to move, but he kept making impatient gestures at me, and after about 30 seconds he said, I'm out of here, and jumped off the stage. Then that creepy Game Over music was playing. Strangely enough, it was playing the US Game Over theme and I was playing on the European version. However, it was slowed down in reverse, so it almost sounded, I guess, demonic? I just thought that the controller had a broken D-pad. So I plugged into the other controller and restarted the game. This time I had finally got him moving, the stage played out as normal, but one thing was different about the stage. Amy was missing, and I wasn't in Palm Tree Panic Pass, so this didn't make any sense. I proceeded to Collision Chaos Zone, and Amy was present this time, but the US music was playing for the stage instead. I went over to that area that was blocked off by the spikes, and when Sonic and Amy had gotten there, Metal Sonic came out of the passage and grabbed Amy. But he killed Sonic in the process. The Game Over music was playing again, and Metal Sonic was floating in the air during it, laughing at me with Amy screaming in his arms. I restarted the game and went to Tidal Tempest Zone. There was no water, no badniks around, the future past signposts were missing too, and Sonic looked worried, as he kept making frantic gestures at me. At the end of Act 3, once I had defeated the boss, which was easy since there was no water, there were no bubbles to break, I was taken to the end. But there was an invisible wall preventing me from destroying the flower seed capsule. At that point, the ground gave way and Sonic fell for about 30 seconds, before landing in a spiked bed at the bottom. Now once Sonic had died, the Game Over music triggered again, and Metal Sonic flew over and laughed at me once again. I really wanted to find out the true meaning of this tormenting game, and what I could do to stop it. I wanted to see what would happen if I had went to the rest of the levels, so I selected Quartz Quadrant and proceeded to play it. The enemies were still missing, so I decided to do a little return to the past and see what would happen then. However, I wasn't expecting this. The level was burning down, the animals had turned into ash, and no robots were present. But there were robot generators there that didn't spawn anything. As well as the Metal Sonic holograms displaying images of Metal Sonic laughing. What's more is that in the end, they were indestructible. Wacky workbench's checkered floor didn't make Sonic bounce at all. In fact, they didn't even trigger. Still, no enemies were present, and those weird and destructible holograms were still playing in the past. Yet I still managed to get a good future. Finally, I reached Stardust Speedway Zone, and things started playing as normal, that is, until I had reached Act 3. Metal Sonic was waiting for me as usual, and there was no sign of Robotnik. The race still played out as normal, but Metal Sonic was incredibly fast, and I managed to get to the end without getting in front of him. At the end, the finish was blocked off, and Metal Sonic was standing on the other side shaking his finger. You know, like Sonic does at the title screen. Suddenly a message popped up which had read, I'm going to enjoy watching you suffer. Suddenly, 
Robotnik appeared from behind and the beam from his ship killed Sonic, and once Sonic had died, Metal Sonic was laughing once more, with Robotnik doing the exact same. I now hoped that Metal Metallic Madness would be different, and uh, I was right. I managed to get a good feature and finally got the last time stone. I got to the boss, which was Metal Sonic again, and the final boss machine, which had spikes instead of those four flaps, so there was no chance of me winning this round at all, actually. And I was right again. Metal killed me the first chance he had and laughed maniacally once again. The game, at this point, was now over. Three weeks have passed since I have even turned on that godforsaken game. Metal is freaking me out, and I need to know more. I decided to post online about the game and all of its creepy content. One person asked me, Have you tried identifying the game code in the CD? So I decided to contact a buddy of mine who knew how to hack into game code. Within two days, he replied and told me that the game itself had been tampered with, and that I was holding what might possibly just be a hacked copy of the game. But he also informed me that he had found a secret level whilst analyzing the gameplay. Apparently poking around in the game's file codes, there was a hidden level known as Sinos Latrum, Metal Sonic Backwards and that it would be triggered if I enter the following numbers into the sound test option. 56, 12, 9. That night, even though I was scared stiff, I opened a Tupperware of shrimp fried rice, poured myself a glass of oregano, and prepared to enter the code. But once I did, I was taken to what appeared to be the final level of metallic madness, but the title screen said, Sinos Latin Zone, and the music was Metallic Madness's Bad Future. I made my way through the level as normal in destroying the Hotaru mini-bosses, and I then got to the boss, which was Metal Sonic. His battle style in this music was similar to that of Gemmer from Sonic Advance 3. He was dashing from one side to the other, launching missiles and even shooting a beam from his stomach. It took me about 43 hits, actually, to even destroy him. And after that, Sonic was teleported to the past and watched us all of the Metal Sonic generators explode and the animals cheering out with glee, carrying the corpse of what appeared to be Metal Sonic. As it passed by Sonic, I swear it said, there is only one Sonic. Finally, the Titanium Terror was destroyed and the game returned to normal after that. But sometimes, I can see secret messages whenever I tried to return to that level, saying, you have bested me this time. At least it was gone. And I did not have to worry about this game anymore. Well, that was an interesting Sonic CD creepypasta. Now, following in the traditional ROM hack format, it actually started out relatively good. I think personally it got really, really weak towards the end, and it was kind of evident when the cliches started popping up left and right. The acquisition was normal, getting it off eBay and whatnot, while again, some people say that is a cliche and you see it done all the time. Here it is done gracefully, and again, when done gracefully and well, it's not really a cliché, but rather a nice touch. Again, not all clichés can really be bad. The game itself is nothing too special. The technicals behind it, while they do make sense, can be hacked into a game. I mean, if we we have seen some pretty weird Sonic uh, ROM hacks in the past, so there's nothing out of the ordinary. Again, being the mo being being one of the most popular game franchises out there with a pretty heavy modded community behind the Genesis games makes it very evident that this is a reality. Now. What really gets to me, that, you know, and it makes me not like the story towards its end, is the plot involving the hacked game. While the technicals are nice, it's great, there's always a plot that binds all of these together, right? Sometimes it's just, oh, I felt nostalgic, wanted to play a video game, which is, again, almost all of them, but they do have their own sort of individual plot that somehow exists, you know, amongst them, right? Like a little bit of, you know, their own individuality peppered in. Over here, it felt like it went nowhere towards the middle, and I was desperately trying to figure out just what the fuck was going on half the time. Now, towards the end, in the epilogue section, you get to this sort of cohesiveness, you know, where this hacker friend uncovers a secret world option using the sound test, which is a pretty infamous option in this game in particular, so it's a nice touch that they actually reference that again. A lot of Sonic CD creepy elements are unlocked via the sound hack test option, not sound hack, sound test option if you can look at some of the, you know, if you can look at the uh, Sock Files episode for that as well, which, you know, again, in that regard, it was nice to see them touch upon that. You end up getting this off-kilt ending, 
that just seems way too nice for some reason. And maybe it's my personal preference and taste, but it just, it completely flipped itself around from where it was headed to. I mean, it started off with this foreboding kind of feeling. It started, it felt like it was going to go dark and then it just completely one up my expectations. <laughs> Not one up, but it went into this good ending kind of feel? Uh, the last two lines even, there is only one Sonic and you have bested me this time, were a little too cringeworthy and I think are best left ignored. But in the end, you find a creepypasta that may have started out well, but it had a mediocre ending and while it's not like shit pasta territory, again, when you want to get a shit pasta, like pretty much every element of it is bad. In all, it's not as bad as some other creepypastas I've read and we've read on this channel, but it is competent, you know, it, it, as, as a whole, you know, even if you count the lackluster stranding throughout it, it, it does, it, it does stay in its sort of shape, its body, if you will. And that is this creepypasta in general, Sonic CD Maniacs Galore. And as always, I do want to ask you what you thought of this creepypasta in the comments below. Did you like it? Did you dislike it? What would you rate it? And what would you change to make it better? Let me know. This is me, Mudahar, and this has been another episode of Haunted Gaming. And if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. This is me, Mudahar, and I gotta play some Sonic CD.